Hello friends, welcome to arpitakarwa.com, India's finest online coaching for English literature. Today we are going to cover a short summary of The Duchess of Malfi. It's a five-fact play written by John Webster. Now friends, the full name of this play is The Tragedy of the Duchess of Malfi. It is a fine example of Macabre, which is a tragic play. The Duchess of Malfi, like most of Webster's work, is a part of the genre of drama known as Senecan Tragedy. named for the roman playwright seneca who is credited with inventing the form while typical tragedies such as oedipus rex or king lear feature a great man who is destroyed by a fatal flaw in his character senecan tragedy is marked by a love of bloody spectacular violence and a focus on revenge revenge runs throughout the duchess of malfi so you have to remember that the main element here is revenge the play is set in italy rome and milan It is uh, loosely based on events that occurred between about 1508 and 1513. The Duchess was Giovanna di Aragona, Duchess of Amalfi. Webster's principal source was in William Painter's The Palace of Pleasure. Now let's look at the characters. The first character is the Duchess of Amalfi. She has a cashier or a steward called Antonio. The Duchess has two brothers, Cardinal and Ferdinand. Cariola is the Duchess's servant. Delio is Antonio's friend, and Bosola is Cardinal's servant, and Julia is Cardinal's love interest. So take some time, look at the storyboard, and you know, uh, try to understand who's whose servant, con kis ka bhai hai, and who's who's love interest. So names are also little, uh, you know, tongue twister types. Just give it a moment, understand the characters, and then let's begin with the plot of the play. The story starts in Roman Catholic Italy with the palace of the Duchess of Malfi. Uh, the heroine of the story, the Duchess, she becomes a widow at a very young age. She rules the Italian town of Amalfi. The Duchess has a steward named Antonio. Steward means a sort of a cashier or a treasurer. Antonio has just returned from France. He comes to the palace of the Duchess with his friend Delio. Now, meanwhile, the Duchess's two brothers, Cardinal and Ferdinand, also enter the palace. Antonio tells Delio that the Duchess's brothers are horrible men, whereas the Duchess is a sweet, noble, and a beautiful woman. She can easily get married again. However, her brothers won't let her get married again. They want her to stay a widow. Now, why? So that her fortune, her money, and wealth can be divided among the brothers. Now, Cardinal has a servant, Bosola, who is a murderer. He has just come out of jail after completing a sentence, and Ferdinand makes Bosola a spy and asks him to keep an eye on the Duchess. Bosola does not want to spy on the Duchess, but he knows that he has to agree to the orders of his duke. So, finally, he agrees. Cardinal and Ferdinand tells the Duchess again to not get married, and she agrees. Now, when the brothers leave, the Duchess calls for her servant Cariola and tells her that she will secretly get married, not to anyone else but Antonio, her steward. The Duchess woos or attracts Antonio, and later Antonio and the Duchess secretly get married. After 9 months, the duchess is about to give birth to Antonio's child. She is secretly pregnant. Bosola is still spying for Ferdinand and he's doubtful if the duchess is pregnant. So in order to test this theory, he hands a fruit named apricot to the duchess. So when the duchess eats the fruit, she feels sick and the entire palace gets to know that something has happened to the duchess. However, Antonio and the duchess take care of the matter and tell everyone that the duchess is just sick due to some illness. Antonio casually asks Bosola if he has put poison in apricot. Bosola says that he will never try to kill the duchess. Antonio leaves the scene but something falls from his pocket. Bosola picks it up and he realizes that it is the horoscope of the duchess's child. Now Bosola is confident that the duchess has given birth to a child. He sends the horoscope to Cardinal and Ferdinand in Rome and when the brothers get to know about the news, they get extremely angry that how dare their sister disobey them. How could she let someone pollute the royal bloodline? However, they decide that before taking any action, they will find the father of the child.
After some years, the Duchess gives birth to two more children of Antonio. Ferdinand secretly goes inside the Duchess's bedroom. He gives a knife to the Duchess and asks her to kill herself. The Duchess tells him that she is married now. And hearing this, Ferdinand gets extremely unhappy. He says that she has ruined herself and the reputation of the family. Ferdinand pledges that he will never see his sister again. The Duchess and Antonio plan to run away together. The Duchess puts a false allegation on Antonio so that he can leave the palace to go somewhere. However, in the court, Bosola defends Antonio. This makes the Duchess believe that Bosola is a good man and can be taken into confidence. She tells the truth about her and Antonio to Bosola. But as we know, Bosola was Ferdinand's spy. He sends this news to Cardinal and Ferdinand in Rome. Cardinal calls Antonio, but Antonio knows that this is a trap. Instead of accepting the invitation, he runs to Milan with his elder son. Meanwhile, Bosola arrests the Duchess and her two children and locks them in the dungeons of the Amalfi Palace. Now, Ferdinand has pledged that he will never see the face of his sister again. He goes to meet her in the dark and scares her. He tells her that Antonio is dead and so are her children. Hearing this, the Duchess wants to die too. She is upset, shocked and devastated. This is not all. Ferdinand puts a lot of screaming madmen outside the Duchess's window so that they can yell all day, traumatizing the Duchess even more. Now, Basola realizes that he has done wrong to the Duchess. He goes to the jail in disguise and tells the Duchess that he is here to kill her. Our Duchess is a brave woman and she does not get scared at all. Meanwhile, some other men enter the jail. They kill the Duchess, her children and also Cariola, the Duchess's maid. Now, this is what Ferdinand did with his own sister. But when he sees the dead body of the Duchess, he goes on a guilt trip and is devastated. He blames Basola for following his orders. He first asked Basola to torture his sister and when now, when Basola obeyed and the Duchess is dead, Ferdinand is blaming Basola. Ferdinand refuses to give the money to Basola for his service and leaves from there. There is a short twist in the story now. The Duchess still has some breath left. Basola tells her that Antonio is alive and the Duchess is able to die peacefully. Let's go to Milan now. Here Antonio still does not know that her wife and two children are dead. He thinks that he will go to Cardinal and make everything all right. Now friends, we know that Ferdinand lost his mind over the guilt of his sister's murder. Cardinal does not want the world to know that he himself was involved in the planning of the Duchess's murder as well. In order to keep his alliance a secret, he asks Basola to kill Antonio too. Now Cardinal is in love with a woman named Julia. So when Julia sees Basola for the first time, she falls in love with him. So friends, here is a love triangle. Cardinal loves Julia and Julia loves Basola. Basola requests Julia to make Cardinal confess about murdering his own sister. Basola also wants Julia to help him get his money from Cardinal. So when Julia goes to Cardinal, he understands her motives. He makes her kiss a book which is layered with poison. Julia also dies. Vosola has decided to take the revenge of the Duchess's death and to defend Antonio from the Cardinal, he sets a trap. He tells Cardinal that he is ready to help him. Now, the last scene of the play comes. It is set in Cardinal's court. He tells all his courtmen to stay inside their rooms at night. He further says that no matter what screams you hear, do not come out of your rooms. Cardinal has planned that once Basola kills Antonio, Cardinal will kill Basola too. So Basola secretly enters the court and hears Cardinal's planning. Antonio comes there too, hoping to sort out the fight. Antonio still does not know that the Duchess is dead. Unfortunately, in the dark, Basola kills Antonio by mistake. So when Antonio is on the verge of dying, Basola tells him that the brothers have killed the Duchess and their two children. Now, Basola is coming to kill the Cardinal. Cardinal shouts and screams, but no one comes out to help him because he himself had told his courtmen that tonight, no matter what, you will stay in the rooms only. So, during the fight, Basola wounds Cardinal twice. Ferdinand also enters the court. He thinks Basola and Cardinal are two devils. Basola also wounds Ferdinand. So, when Ferdinand is dying, he says that the reason for our death are our own deeds. All three of them. Ferdinand, Cardinal and Basola die while fighting. So when everyone is dead, Delio enters the scene with Antonio's eldest son. He will now raise him and make him the Duke. So basically, everyone is dead except 
one child who is going to grow up and take over everything. And the child is of Antonio and the Duchess. So that's all for this lecture. I hope everything is clear to you. Have a look at the storyboards, try to understand it. And I'm sure it will help you in your exam. So we'll soon meet in the next lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.